Hi guys, today's November 26th, 2019, and I know it's been a minute before since I've been on here. Um, I have a testimony and some prophetic events that I'm going to be updating. Um, it has been a while. Um, ever since my uncle passed, it's been one tragedy after another. Um, family members going to jail over drugs and, you know, CPS involvement with family members, and it's just been you know, then the death and then my family mistreating me and it's just been so on and so forth. Well, I got so caught up in my pain that I forgot about my, my family, my true family who had my back. Um, I left Facebook. I haven't been on YouTube. Um, I went out and I decided that I was going to drink my pain away, something that is not me. And that's exactly what I tried doing. And the only thing that it did was make me feel guilty. Um, and when, when you walk with God, um, God never said that it was going to be easy. And God never said that, you know, he's not going to allow Satan to do stuff to us. He will, but that's where our faith comes in because faith is what makes us stronger. So just when we think that we've had enough, God comes in and he trumps Satan every time because we are his and God loves us enough to do that. Um, and there's been, um, okay. It's like this. Um, God loves us so much that he sends people our way to help us through our troubling situations. Okay. Remember Popeye? Um, he would sit there and be like, well, I can't take it no more. And then he pops open a can of spin, just go, 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 go. Boom, and then he's got the muscles. That's his strength. That spinach, right? Well, the people that God sends in our life is our strength. Okay. As well as God himself. Um, he allows us to go through trials and tribulations, um, so we can depend more on him. Now, the thing is, I have said before, there's nothing that's going to hinder my walk. Nothing's going to get in the way. I'm strong. But until you go through a situation, you don't know how strong you have to be. And it hit home because it, you know, I talked to a friend, Leanne, and the one thing she said about my video, which really struck me, was that in a way I was being selfish. I was thinking all about me, 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 instead of about what God has done for me through the situation. And, you know, I have been so focused on my pain that I didn't show any love of God through me. Okay, so instead, I took all that bitterness and held it inside and took it out on everyone, including family. And most of it, I jumped to some conclusions. Um, and you know, my family has truly, truly, um, threw me under the bus during this whole process. But I've learned that when you hold grudges and you have unforgiveness in your heart, it just hurts you. It doesn't hurt the other person. And that's the thing. I was hurting myself and I was hurting God because I wasn't depending on him. And he wants us to depend on him through the good times and the bad. And sometimes our cries are better than a hallelujah. And Boy, I, I don't think I've ever cried like I have. I've lost a set of identical twins. I've miscarried twice. You know, I've lost my aunt. I've I've lost a lot of people. But losing my uncle was something different because he had a spiritual connection with me that no one in the flesh here has. And another thing is when you allow your pain to take over like that, we are allowing our flesh to... um have strongholds and connections to this world. We're holding on to this world. And Jesus said, even to his disciples, remember in Matthew 6, 19 through 21, do not conform to the things of this earth where moth and rust destroy, but conform your things in heaven for where your heart is there, your heart be also. And that's, that's where I was. I was not willing to let go of this world. And God said, not family, no friends, no children, nothing should keep you bonded to this world. And that's the thing. I was putting myself back in bondage instead of giving it to my savior who died on the cross for me, who loved me 
enough to give me another chance through my trials, you know, and I tried to put myself in Jesus's place, but then I became selfish and I was like, well, I'm not God. I'm human. So, you know, being all human, these emotions are completely different when in reality, he created these emotions. So he knows exactly what we're going through. Um, so I want to thank each and every one of you for your prayers, for your comments, um, for your Bible passages, for your comforting words, for your encouragement. Um, I can never repay you. And I thank you so much because, you know, things happen for a reason and, um, not all the time we can see it. And being a Christian, we will be persecuted, mocked, put down. We will have people have their hearts of cold. They're, they're, they grow wax um, towards us because we accepted Jesus Christ. And um, so, anyways, that's part of what I wanted to tell you. And then, all right. So I also wanted to tell you, read you um, the scripture that actually brought up, you know, at my time as well. It's uh, Psalms 116.1. It says, I love the Lord because he hath heard my voice and my supplications. God's never abandoned us. It's who he, us who abandon him. And I know at times we think that, you know, our burdens are too much to bear. But he says, your burdens are not too much to bear. I am here. It's the fact of giving it to God instead of holding on. But like I said, part of me was just holding on to this pain. And this pain was from this world. See, and God is our absolute, you know, redeemer. He's the one that takes it all away. He doesn't say it's going to be easy. I mean, and he specifically told us before all these things was going to happen. We knew when we become born again, this type of trials was going to come upon us. We willingly chose that because we love God. Okay. And then knowing the unseen, hold on just a second. My kids are yelling. Oh my goodness. Okay. Sorry. They went back upstairs. Chaotic. Knowing the unseen can sometimes feel tricky in a world that relies on the tangible to operate. God, through his word, assures us that he is real and available to us when we pray. Prayer is the means that God cultivates a real loving relationship with us. As you pray today, be reminded that God hears you. And this message was not just for me. This message is for you. There is someone on this channel that needs to hear this because they're going through trials, whether it be a porn addiction, uh, cigarettes, trying to quit drinking, um, a, you know, being abused or being the abuser or you know, drugs or, um, cheating. It doesn't matter. You know, there's nothing that we go through that God does not, cannot take away from us and refill our life with love and understanding and peace. He loves us enough. He gives us chances after chances, even when we don't deserve it. And that's one thing as humans don't like doing is giving people chances. But God says, love our enemies as ourself. You know, may love our enemies more. And that's love our neighbors. Love your enemies. And I'm like, and that's another thing. Family, enemies. And because of that, I have been blessed. I just got offered a new position at my job. And um, I got um, offered a raise after Christmas. And, you know, for obedience and stuff, I believe this is God's way of saying thank you. But though I was disobedient, I had to fall to understand that God was trying to speak to me. God is quiet during a test and he allows certain things to happen in our life so that we can come back and rely on him. And we have that strength, okay? Because we get armored up when we have Christ. And without Christ, we are utterly alone. It's like going into battle with no gear. You know, God is our gear. You know, the helmet of salvation. Um, what is it? The, the breastplate of righteousness or... I, I don't know it all, but there's, you know, being armored up from head to toe. That is God who armors us up. Okay. We have a shield um, and, and God protects us through all of our storms. And um, 
Okay. Um, do you desire to feel God's presence in your life? Absolutely, I do. Sometimes dis discipline and a new routine is the best way to grow closer to God. The psalmist used the morning hours to seek God. When in your day can you make times to seek God's presence in your life? And that's the thing. I I made a new goal. And it's not just a goal. It's a life-changing goal. Um, I lost who I was. Or so I thought. I'm never too lost that I cannot be found. Even God says that. You know, when that one sheep goes astray, he leaves the 99 there and goes after that one sheep. And he makes sure to bring us back to the herd because God loves us that much. Okay, now um, I'm going to get into some very important stuff and I may not be able to cover it all. But uh, I didn't know if you guys knew. I'm sure you've heard it on other YouTube videos, which I have not been watching. As I said, this is just little here and there things. Um Israel, of course, is still without a government. Um, Gantz obviously couldn't form a government either. And just like uh, Rabbi uh, Kaduri said, that um, neither one of the Benjamins will be able to form a government. Um, but we know that Netanyahu will be the one to hand the keys over to the Messiah. Okay, so the Antichrist. the And the Antichrist is someone whom the Jews will openly, publicly announce, publicly um, accept him. So it's someone that is of importance to them in close relation, someone who has already been in power. Okay. Um, and the Knesset will have 21 days now, um, to form a government by December 11th. Okay. And the Knesset gets to pick one person and if they form it, then they go into um, electing whomever they think their leader should be. But if they don't, okay, then they have another 14 days, which leads us to Christmas Day. All right. Now, what's great about this? Hanukkah this year is December 22nd through the 30th, and it's three days before Christmas. Okay. And we know that there's a lot of prophetic... Um, numbers with the number eight which would be you know december 8th plus three days would be december 11th um so eight and eleven and then uh, it says um and it's going to be without an extension after christmas which leads and it's also one day after the internet shut down for youtube now what i mean by that is microsoft words words google and YouTube is all, um, the leader, the one who created the internet is trying to take away the voice of the bride. Okay. And we know that in Amos and in Jeremiah, um, and Joel, that they're, that the voice of the bridegroom is going to get taken away. Um, and the only way that they can, the, the perfect way to do that would be to monitor us and to make it commercial. Okay, and with it being commercial, that means since I'm not making no money on what I do and I don't I don't have a commercial or anything, they're going to take my channel down. Okay, so that's why we need to be strong and grounded in God's word. And um, I am going to be leaving my email as well as my phone number, something I don't ever do um, on the in the description box. Um, but I work. Monday through Friday, except this week, and I work nine, uh, and I get home at four, which technically I'm at work by 830 every day, so I am unavailable during the morning hours, I am available in the evening better, about, I'd say, 415-ish, um, so, and you guys have to text me first before I answer, um, tell me your name, um, or whatever, um, cause I believe that this is the way that we need to be there for one another. Okay. And, um, another thing I wanted to mention was Paul, Paul's love for his church, his people was so strong. He sent Timothy out, right? Um, hold on. Okay. So Paul loved his people enough. Okay. Um, 
because he was the church of Philippi, which is means um, one body in the Greek. Okay, and some things happen have to happen to jump our faith, and Satan can mess with us. But like I said, God only allows Satan to do it for a short leash. But Paul, okay, he sat there and he preached to his his the disciples and sent them out on their own okay but he was distraught he loved his people so much he could not stand being away from them okay just like timothy um so he sent him out to do his own um thing but he came back and wanted to check on him and tell him to go back and encourage his people okay and it's almost like when we have a baby and they go to stay the night at someone's house, the whole time you're out, all you keep thinking about is that child. Is he okay? I miss him. You're not having any fun because all you're doing is missing him. Okay, that's how Paul felt. And that's how God feels with us. And when we abandon him, it hurts him. Worse than any other pain. Okay, so I, that I wanted to say. Um, and... About the other date thing. Um, the 10th, the internet shut down. The 11th for the Knesset. And the 12th, Putin just put out a um, on the Jerusalem Post. I will have all this stuff in the description box. So be looking. There's going to be a lot of stuff in there. Uh, Putin's holding off his decision on Ishashar, which is the woman that was uh, jailed, um, till December 12th. And it says, or until Israel forms a government. So he's waiting till about the 12th. And I find that all these dates amazing because it's 10th, 11th, 12th. And then we got Christmas. And then they're still in the Hanukkah time. Okay. And Hanukkah is what? 12 days? Okay. Now, I'm going to read to you. No, I'm going to gonna read all the article. I'm going to read you bits and pieces because i got a lot to cover. Uh, the UN or, or the U.S. tells the U.N. it is pulling out of the Paris climate deal, which is a bad thing because we know that, um, you know, for the e economy and stuff to thrive, we need them. Um, so we've got that going on. I will read this one last because that will blow your mind. And does the U.S. shift on settlements increase the chance for peace? There is importance in stating the truth, even if it doesn't have a direct tangible outcome. In any conflict, there is value in making sure that both sides recognize the truth. It helps them reach a viable and lasting solution. It is through this prism that it is worth looking at. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo's announcement on Monday that the U.S. no longer views Israeli settlements in the West Bank as illegal, aligning Washington with Jerusalem's stance that has been long dismissed by the international community does the decision increase the chances of peace yes and no okay it says on the one hand the palestinians view this announcement as just another example after the moving of the u.s embassy to jerusalem recognizing of jerusalem israel's capital and recognition of israeli sovereignty over the golan heights of u.s bias and as proof that donald trump is not capable of serving as an honest broker which we all know. On the other hand, Israel finally has a country, and not just any country, that stands behind its claim that settlements are not inherently illegal, but rather are part of a disputed land whose fate can only be determined through negotiations and a peace deal. And then it says, it is true that this new policy won't immediately change anything, just like the recognition of Jerusalem didn't. Okay, um... So it just keeps going on, uh, talking about the deal of the century. Um, how does the new policy work with Trump's administration peace plan, otherwise known as the deal of the century? So for now, we must wait and see. And Israel is God's time clock. Um, and it says, like his say, Sahar challenges Netanyahu, says he can form the next government and unify the nation. And I know that people have been talking about him possibly being the Antichrist, which I'm sure that they would allow him to be. Um, I'm just going to read to you. It says, I think I will be able to form a government and I think I will be able to unify the country and the nation. Reports emerged on Wednesday that incumbent Prime Minister Netanyahu sought to cancel the Likud primaries in case of a third election takes place, receiving 
backing from many Lycid members. All I know and what the Spirit has been showing me and telling me is the next leader of Israel is going to be the Antichrist. So we are that close. And another great thing that I found interesting was this. That, oh, let me see if it says it in here. So give me just a second. Israel Lieberman priming for third consecutive election. Okay. But the dates are mind-blowing on the dates. Um, let me see. Hold on. Like I said, I'm not going to read it all. Uh, March of 2020 is when the elections would be closely around March 23rd. Okay, and March 23rd, hold on. I've written all this stuff down. Um, Yes, and what, what's great is if they go into third elections, that's March 23rd, right? 2020 or March, in between March 9th and the 23rd, around that area, which the 23rd is around the barley harvest. And, you know, in John it says is there's not yet still four months until the harvest or three months until the harvest of so the laborers are few. He's going to send out many harvesters, okay? And I, I've always believed us being the barley, we spring up. Okay, and then the fall is the fall of mankind because of the sin of God's people, which ever since, you know, Israel did the sacrifice and, you know, um, they did what they did. There's been nothing but chaos that has hit them. It's It's been one thing after a dag on another. And if this be the case, it falls on Purim. So that's not coincidental. And like I said, um... Uh, at my last few videos that um, the Pope um, is going to announce on May 14th um, the New World Order. Yep. So, lots of events coming up. And I'm going to read this last thing and I'm going to close. Which, it's a long article which I will have everything out. But the name of this, and actually, which is crazy, I don't know how I get them, but I get emails through these different news sources, and it says, Rabbi, this is the rabbi, blessing Trump as king shows he is the final president before the return of Davidic dynasty. A rabbi recited a special blessing upon seeing Donald Trump, which is only recited for actual kings. Though some rabbis questions whether it was appropriate, one rabbi sees Trump's presidential woes as the precursor to the return of the true king. Jesus Christ, we see that. I will make them a single nation in the land on the hills of Israel, and one king shall be the king of them all. Never again shall they be two nations, and never again shall they be divided into two kingdoms. Ezekiel 37, 22. And we know Ezekiel 38 is coming up. So, President Trump attended an Orthodox Jewish fundraiser event at the International Hotel in Manhattan on Tuesday evening. 400 Orthodox Jews participated in the event, contributing an estimate 100000 each for the honor of paying a personal tribute to the commander-in-chief. Rabbi Yosef... Yish, uh, Yitzchak, Kak, Chak, however, Jacobson recited the blessing set upon seeing a non-Jewish ruler. Blessed art thou, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, that you have shared part of your love and glory and compassion with the human, human being who maintains the honor of every innocent person and every Jew forever. They're giving Trump a lot of honor and glory and truly accepting him as a Messiah or a king. Okay, and we know King Cyrus was, you know, chosen as well, but he was a pagan king whom um, ended up dying, but his heart was not for God. He, he did the works of God because God allowed it to be so, so that the prophetic events could take place. I am not for Trump. I am not against Trump. And I just know that I would never worship man. God says to there is only one God and one God only, and it is he. It is him. Um, though it is doubtful that the president understood the full important import of the blessing, Trump appeared to be impressed at the ritual focused on his honor. He See, and that's the thing. Trump is soaking in all of this, this glory and the, the Jews loving him so much. The crowd responded with an enthusiastic amen and chants of four more years. 
Mm, sounds like a continuous to me. Uh, the Talmud states that it is a mitzvah, Torah commandment, for a Jew to go out of his way to see rulers and kings, whether they are Jewish or non-Jewish. But there is a dispute among Hal Hal Halkic, which is the Torah law, authorities as to whether this blessing should be recited with the complete name of God in these times upon seeing a ruler who is not a king. It is significant that when the rabbi recited the blessing upon seeing Donald Trump, he said the complete and explicit name of God in Hebrew. Rabbi Nachman Nahana, a prominent spiritual leader in Jerusalem, did not agree with Rabbi Jacobson's decision to use his name of God in his existence. So I'm not going to continue reading this, but I will let you guys go. Pray over this as always, and I hope this encouraged you like it did me. Jesus is coming anytime, any day, and be prepared for trials and tribulations because God will see you through. God bless.